Uh, okay, okay, all right, here we go. I'll put us on the screen so that we can be seen. And then we'll do this uh, popcorn style, okay? All right, do you remember popcorn style? Like you say it first and I say second? Yes, but if, if uh, it's kind of like where you can read one sentence and then you say popcorn and then I will read from where you stopped, right? And then same ah, thing. Okay. So for example, if I'm two sites, right? I'll go with Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, website or email and website abstract. A purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash, popcorn, dubbed him. Ah. And then we start would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another. Okay. Okay. All right. So you may begin from to another right here. A purely like I will start first. Yeah. Okay. A purely peer to peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. Digital signatures provide part of the solution, but the main benefits are lost if a trust third party is still required to prevent double spending. We propose a solution to the double spending problem using a peer-to-peer -peer network. The network timestamps transactions by hashing them into an ongoing chain of hash-based proof of work, forming a record that cannot be changed without redoing the proof of work, popcorn. The longest chain not only serves as proof of the sequence of events witnessed, but proof that it came from the largest pool of CPU power. As long as the majority of CPU power is controlled by nodes that are not cooperating to attack the network, they'll generate the longest chain and outpace attackers. The network itself requires minimal structure. Message, uh, messages are broadcast on a best effort basis and nodes can leave and rejoin the network at will. Accepting the longest proof of work chain as proof of what happened while they were gone. Introduction, popcorn, tub tip. Commerce on the internet has come to rely almost exclusively on financial institutions, serving as trusted parties to process electronic payments. While the system works well enough for most transactions, it still suffers from the inherent weakness of the trust base model. Completely non-reversible transactions are not really possible since financial institutions cannot avoid mediating disputes. The cost of mediation increases transaction costs, limiting the minimum practical transaction size and cutting off the possibility for small casual transactions. And there is a broader cost in the loss of ability to make non-reversible payment for non-reversible services. With the possibility of reversal, the need for trust spread. Merchants must be wary of their customers, hassling them for more information than they would otherwise need it. Um, popcorn. A certain, good job, by the way. Okay, all right. This is not easy, okay? Um, when you started off, it really did sound like a newscaster report, right? It's good, your voice. All right. Your reading voice has evolved quite a bit. And the way that it sounds today is getting closer and closer to a natural native delivery. Okay. All right. It's, it will be one of the standard exercises for you now and in the next 10 years, right. Of like how to get to that level. Okay. This kind of QC process, a lot of it can happen solo though now. Right. Um, but you know, when you have time, coaching is fun though. All right, here we go. Like, even for me, though, I try to still practice it every day, even at where I'm at, you know, right? And I have to, once I get to the level that I can do it in Pasatai, um, I, I think I will start to see some more improvement, right? Okay, what is needed is an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof of instead of trust. Oh, wait, hold on. Um, a certain percentage of fraud is acceptable as accepted as unavoidable. These costs and payment uncertainties can be avoided in person by using physical currency, but no mechanism exists to make payments over communications channel without a trusted party. What is needed is an electronic payment system based on crypto graphic proof instead of trust, allowing any two willing parties to transact directly with each other without the need for a trusted third party. Popcorn tub Transactions that are computationally impractical to reverse would protect sellers from fraud. 
-hmm. and routine escrow mechanisms could easily be implemented to protect buyers. In this paper, we proposed a solution to the double spending problem using a peer-to-peer -peer distributed timestamp server to generate computational proof of the chronological orders of transactions. The system is secure as long as honest nodes collectively control more CPU power than any cooperating group of attacker nodes. So side point, right? Like we'll go into a little bit deeper analysis after this, but uh, one point that I'll make is a review from before. It's that Satoshi Nakamoto wrote a white paper. It's nine pages on blockchain, te blockchain technology, which is incredibly efficient, right? And it's cool that there's a white paper that exists, right? And we're reading it right now. Uh, the second point here is that, yeah, the strength of you reading it is pretty cool. And then this main point is very interesting is that in order for someone to hack it, there have to be more attacking nodes or CPU power than honest nodes. So they design the system for it. If you can benefit it from it, honestly, it's easier and better than to fight the system, right? Yeah. Uh, that's the thing that I really, right? And that's one of the main ideas inside here. That's really quite beautiful. All right, here we go. Uh, we won't go into gambler's ruin or any of the schematics today, right? Uh, conclusion, popcorn. Ah, okay, we have proposed a system for electronic transaction without relying on trust. We started with the user framework of coins made from digital signatures, which provides strong control of ownership of chip, but is incomplete without a way to pre prevent double spending. To solve this, we proposed a peer-to-peer -peer network using proof of work to record a public history of transactions that quickly becomes computationally impractical for an attacker to change if honest nodes control a majority of CPU power. The network is robust in its unstructured uh, its unstructured simplicities. Nodes work all at once with little coordination. They do not need to be identified since messages are not rooted in any particular place and only need to be delivered on a best effort basis. Popcorn. Nodes can leave and rejoin the network at will, accepting proof of work chain, the proof of work chain as proof of what happened while they were gone. They vote with their CPU power, expressing their acceptance of valid blocks by working on extending them and rejecting invalid blocks by refusing to work on them. Any needed rules and incentives can be enforced with this consensus mechanism. All right. So the coolest thing I want to show you about this is that when they apply something called gambler's ruin, which I said I wasn't going to cover, I will real quick. It's, it's a very interesting way to look at problems, right? It's that the metaphor, right? The metaphor is that let's say you have a gambler and this gambler has unlimited credit, right? And then he starts owing the house money, okay? And then whatever strategy, whatever program you're making, whatever you do, is that how long, how many times does he have to play until he breaks even, right? And I like this applied to problem solving because it's that how, what is the most efficient way at destroying your solution? And does your solution account for that, right? And so that's the thing I really love about the concept of gambler's ruin and how it's applied to Bitcoin because they satoshi nakamoto ran a bunch of tests right and he applied this where for every time that the transaction gets applied and they uh sync up the proof of work every time the chance that the hacker can break the system yes gets worse, <laughs> right so it's a smaller and smaller chance right p-value ends up becoming worse right and that's really cool. I, I like that. And there's also another limitation that if you read the paper, it's that um, they can't steal other people's coins or networks. They can only take back the transactions that they did. Right. Yeah. So that's a, like a lot of hard work just to take back something you made. Or it's make like the system has a lot of volatility. Volatility. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, one way that I like looking at it is like where if somebody throws a handful of sand in the air, 
right? And then everybody in the world takes a picture at the exact same time of it, right? Yeah. And then spins automatically all the time in all of the calculations. Um, it's different because when a person in the blockchain case, if you look at the diagram over here, is that every piece of sand and every single time somebody takes a picture would have their signature of their key, All right? And then that was that is what would add to the network, which is really interesting as I start to try to understand it uh, being 38 years old, right? And I like being able to show bits and pieces of it to you. Uh, the last point that I'm gonna point out before we're done with this is that the organization and the way to use it for any kind of white paper or business plan you make in the future, right? Is that you have your abstract, you got your intro, you go into the main how of your concept, right? The how. After that, it goes into how is how good or how is how, how does how happen, right? That would be the number three, right? Number four there, it would be proof of work. And I would call that the verification stage, right? Verification. Um, for a business plan, this would be like your financials and pro uh, projections plus the way that the projections are real, Yeah. right? Over here in the next section at five is gonna be the network, right? So that would be anything that is connected beyond one group or entity of data. Again, works for almost any problem, right? The next organizational point is like the incentive. So it's that whoever is reading your paper should by number six, have a very clear idea of what's in it for you, right? And then by the time you get to seven, it's gonna be you're talking about efficiency, right? Here. And then at eight, simple payment, again, more how, privacy, more how, and then you have your conclusion. So the organization of this, paper I thought was like really, really nice, right? It's a very smart person who designed it, okay? All right, cool. All right, boom, done with that. Uh, we're stopping the recording.